What is going on, guys? Welcome back to Hippo Supercoach. And this early morning, we're going to be doing my team update. So exciting times. Um, we've finished the preseason officially. If you haven't checked out my last video, check it out. Um, I've got uh, my final thoughts on the preseason over there. But let's get into the team. So a um, little bit puffed out, not going to lie. Just hit a nice chest, ses chest session. So the chest is feeling pumped up. But I can't show you guys because that's uh, it's going to be fourteen ninety nine on my OnlyFans. So yeah, fifty likes and um, we'll launch an OnlyFans. Nah, I'm only joking. Anyway, let's get into the video. So Nick Dacos D one, absolute no brainer. Now for me, there's not actually that many good options to pick in the back line. So yeah, it's more just about eliminating players from contention. James Sicily is eliminated. Jack Sinclair is eliminated. Um, Luke Ryan probably never was there, and it leaves you with only a couple of guys. So Nick Dacos is one I'm just happy to take a punt on. Yes, he could get tagged. 69% ownership. Am I willing to take a punt against that? Not really. That's going to really hurt if you don't have him and he goes bang. So Nick Dacos, he's in my team. He's locked away unless injury, obviously. Um, then maybe we'll reconsider it, but unless he gets hurt, I don't see why I would, why I would even consider... Um, Trading out Nick Dacos. What is my dog doing? Okay. D2, we have Tom Stewart. So, Tom Stewart's another no-brainer pick. Like, realistically, he's going to be in that 110 to 115 range. He has got that concussion game early last season, so he will have that, you know, his average slightly different from what it should be. But, yeah, very hot on Tom Stewart and just safe options. Last one, well, last uber primo we have, or one of the primos we have is... Sheasel, um, and I guess Hayden Young is a primo. So these guys, look, Sheasel, we know how good he is. We know, we expect him to pick up exactly where he left off. And yeah, he's just an absolute gun. Both games were good in the practice match. Um, he just finds the ball so easily. And the only question mark on Sheasel was whether he was going to go forward, how that would affect him. And look, at this point, I don't think it's going to affect him at all because he's not going to play there. So yeah, I'm happy with Harry Sheasel. Um, I expect him to go 105 to 115, somewhere in that range. If he goes bigger, well, that'd be amazing. And then Hayden Young, obviously, we know we know the drill by now. He's going to play midfield, blah, 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 blah. Um, sound like a broken record at this point. And then for the last few picks, we're just going to go ownership percentage. Um, we're going to grab Zach Williams first. So he's going to be my guy at D5. And then Zach Reed at D6. Caulfield at D7. And we'll grab Big Bad, Ethan Phillips at D8. And this could be anyone. This could be Toby Pink. We're going to see who gets named um, round one. But yeah, so that's the back line done. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Moving on to the midfield. This is where things get very interesting. So that's sort of by highest price. We're grabbing the bomb. You know, anyone that doesn't, or anyone near the channel should know, I've been hot on King Bont for just about as long as I can remember. 40% ownership. I think it's justified. He's a gun. Was absolutely cruising through that game on um, Sunday or Saturday, or whatever it was, or Friday, and he still went 130. He didn't even try. Um, so, Bond, biggest lock ever. Just so freaking good at footy. It's just ridiculous. So many scoring avenues, just a monster. And as long as he's in the midfield, he's going 125 plus very, very easily. Then at M2, Tom Libertore, so someone who hasn't been in the team too frequently um in this preseason but look six percent ownership percentage um i just think pod for one two you gotta remember he's got that injury affected game in there where he scored 20 in like round 20 or something um yeah he's a gun at the end of the day he's an absolute gun and he just seems to get better and better he looked amazing in the practice match and that was with a tag so pff, i just back him in he's gonna be around the mark Worst case, I think he goes 114, 113, but just very, very safe pick in my opinion. Then at D3, we're going down a little bit to Darcy Parrish. Now, I expect him to up his average by a good five points, which would put him close enough, if not in that top eight range. Um, I think he's cleaned up his disposal efficiency in the offseason, and he's just come back absolutely raring to go. And yeah, Darcy Parrish for me, I think he's going to explode this year. I think he can definitely go 115, maybe even 120. Um, I don't think he'll cop too many tags with Merritt being so good. And yeah, I think teams sort of know Merritt's the one to tag, if anyone. Um, 
but yeah, Darcy Parish, very, very keen on him. And then we've got some value. So let's go all the way down to the 490, and it's Nick Martin. He's another one I've been very hot on pretty much since I've heard that, since I read that David King article where he said he was going to be playing um, that Nick Dacos role. And basically he said, like, you have to see it to believe it. David King was very hot on Nick Dacos last year and said, like, he was going to win the Brown though early. And I was like, okay, that's ballsy. Um, Dacos was good in his rookie year, but he wasn't that good. And surely enough, he was right. Now, I'm not trying to meet right David King or anything here, but he got that one right. So I think he can get Nick Martin right. Um, not, I'm not saying Nick Martin's going to win the Brown though, but I think he'll score very well in that. Fuck this dog, this role. Um, yeah. Anyway, after that, we have Matty Crouch. So directly under him. Look, I think Crouch is going to be the number one CBA mid at Adelaide, which is a very, very exciting prospect. He finished off very well last year. Um, only in 7%, which is really surprising to me. Um, I expect him to go 105. If he can go a bit bigger than that, that'd be nice. And then, look, we could sideways him to someone like maybe Clary, maybe Petrarca after their buy, um, if they kind of meet in price. <clears throat> The magic number suggests that they could meet if Crouch starts off well enough and one of those Ubers drop a little bit. So yeah, I, I would say that's a pretty decent strategy and plan. And then best case scenario, he goes 110 plus and he's a keeper and he sort him in at M8. So yeah, Crouch has a lot of upside. He's definitely capable. Then we have Thompson Dow. Now I'm not super hot on him, but I had a lot of cash remaining in my team. So I thought I might upgrade one of my cheap rookies like Manor, I think it was Manor, um, to Thompson Dow. And yeah, so he's sort of sitting at my M6. And then we have McKercher, Sanders, and on the bench we have Jai Clark, Jeremy Sharp, and who was the other one? <clears throat> Henry Husway. So I think I might be wanting to field Husway. I'm going to wait and see between him and maybe McKercher. But yeah, for now, that's how my midfield bench is looking, and it's, it's pretty strong. That's one thing I like. I don't have too many. I've gone and got the expensive rookies. Now, I know I said I was off Grundy, but until I see round zero, I'm going to pick him um, just because of the value. It's so frigging good. And like I said with Crouch, the magic number should mean that Grundy and English might actually meet within like a 50K range of price. Um which is very, very exciting. Obviously, if Grundy starts off 105, 110, then he can get to 600. English might drop to 600. So that's kind of my thinking with that. Um, and then, like I said, if Grundy, with Crouch, if Grundy starts playing well and there's no need to trade him, I won't. If I do need to trade him, then we'll find some other avenue to get him. Um, hopefully, he can pump out a couple of good games to get that price up. I think he should. Yeah, it's so ruck. And that's another thing. We need to wait and see. Is Laddam's going to play? Didn't Sydney play like four tools or something on the weekend? So... Is that realistic and going to happen every week? I don't think so. Um, I think it was more of a trial. And then at R3, Sam Naismith. So, yeah, it's a very boring um, sort of ruck lineup. Everyone's got these three guys. But, look, at the end of the day, you don't need to try and reinvent the wheel. Um, just a little general topic I wanted to discuss is I've got this, like, motto for this next couple of weeks, and that is do not do anything stupid. And it's such a basic saying, but last year I completely fucked my team, um, literally in round one. I traded Tom Green out for like Nazai Wang and Emilera and Lockie Ash, who ended up being okay picks, but they weren't good for me, and I didn't do any research on them. It was just like last second. Why the fuck would I do that? So at this point, I'm trying not to reinvent the wheel with pods and Try not to go for these flashy players because I think one thing we can all do is try and go for like a flashy player. Or like Then we can be like, oh my God, I jumped on him from, you know, from the get-go and I'm a football guru. We don't need to do that shit. Like seriously, I think we all some, somewhat want to do it, but we really don't need to do that. As long as we have a bit of value and a bit of uber primos, I think that's the structure to like have a good team. Um, so yeah, that's my motto. If I do anything dumb, please roast me in the comments because, yeah, I, I don't want to do anything stupid. Anyway, with that being said, let's finish the team off. I've got the stock standard forward line. Um, so what is it? It's Zach Fisher's ownership percentage has fucking gone up. Bastard shouldn't have gone so big. 
Um, what is it? Fisher, Fife, Jordan, Sexton, um, Reed, Wilson, and then Windsor and Dersma on the bench. So that's it for the team. Um, structure wise, I said it in my last video. I want to have around the 10 um, keepers. The guys I absolutely know top of the line. Get a finish top eight or top six of their position, or in my opinion, opinion going to finish there if they haven't already. Um, let's go off the back line. Dacos, Stewart, Sheasel, Young. I expect all of those guys to be in the top six. Bont, Libba, Parrish, I expect to be top eight. So that's three. Crouch and Martin. Look, Martin could be a top six defender. We're going to say no to be on the precaution side. And Crouch, we're not going to say, we're going to say no as well. So we're going to have four plus three, that's seven. Um, and then we have, I don't know if Gorn and Grundy are going to be there. So we'll say yes for now because they have obviously the potential, Gorn especially. Um, so that's eight and then nine. And then Zach Fisher, I'm pretty confident, will be a top six forward. So that is 10. Um, and then after 10, look, if you have 11, it's still really good. Nine is still fine, but that's where, I think 10 is sort of like, right in the, well, it's literally in the middle between 9 and 11, but um, I think that's a good balance of the Uber to value, the Uber premiums to value. So that's my thoughts on it. Um, obviously, each to their own and every season is different, but from what I've gathered, this is sort of the general structure to um, having a successful team. And those guys who've won have had similar structures to this. So yeah, that's how I've structured it up in the end. Look, I've got a lot of money on the bench, 180, 193, 184. Is that a bad thing? Possibly. But I think come these buy rounds early on, you want to have rookies that are good scorers covering these primos like your Dacos's. Um, you know, I think Dacos, yeah, Grundy, Jordan, I need to have good scores coming on for them because it is best 18, I know. But if we can eliminate like a 30 or a 40 from like a Zach Reed, um you know, that's huge. So that's that's what I'm trying to get at. Um, I don't think the team will change too much from now to the season. Obviously, barring injuries, I think I've seen everything I need to see. I don't feel like, like I feel confident in every single one of these players. Look, Thompson Dow's one I'm not too sure about, but the rest of them, I'm pretty pretty sure I know what their scoring output's going to be. But um, yeah, that's it for the video, guys. Hope you all enjoyed. League code in the comments. If you haven't already, Drop a like, please, and hit the subscribe button. Drop a like for that OnlyFans at 50 likes. Um, yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.